Amen. Somebody shout all in. One more time. Somebody say all in. We're talking about community. We started this message series last week. And uh, what I said is that community is God's idea. It's God who instituted community. It's God who created community. The Bible says give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And then it says shall, shout it out loud, shall, shall men, shall people give to you. Shall community give to you. God provides for you through community. So every time you give somebody a cold shoulder, you just destroyed a possible avenue for God to bless you through. Because God created community. Somebody shout community in this place. So this is a four-part message series. Last week we talked about proximity. We say that proximity provides opportunity. Let's say that together. Proximity one more time, real big. One more time, real big. But today we are talking about vulnerability. The V word. Please turn to your neighbor and just tell them, please be vulnerable. Well, if they didn't look at you, they really need it. <laughs> Well, turn to the other neighbor and tell them, please be vulnerable. If they don't respond to you, they really need it. <laughs> and then next week, we're talking about boundaries. Somebody shout boundaries. The stronger the boundaries, the stronger the relationships. Someone giving you a boundary is not them rejecting you. Because the stronger the boundaries, the stronger the relationships. And then on week four, we're going to talk about love. Somebody shout Hallelujah. So let's turn our Bibles today and let's read the Word of God together. Now, I'm just going to tell you this today. Talking about vulnerability uh, is not the most popular thing to talk about. Somebody say amen. But how many people know that here at Impact Church, we like to go into all that God wants us to hear and learn together. Amen. I wish I was talking about victory today, get you guys running around, jumping, shouting. But I know that your victory is in your vulnerability. So can you allow me to talk to you today? Amen. Uh, so once in a while, please say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Encourage the preacher because this is not one of those shouting kind of messages. But I believe this message today can change your life forever. Somebody say amen. Luke chapter 24, verse 36 to 42. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look up my hands and feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. Uh, so, talking about vulnerability, I can't do this well without being vulnerable myself. Somebody say amen. So, the preacher is going to start off by being vulnerable today, and I hope that's okay. So, growing up, I've had so many hairstyles in my life. <laughs> We're going to get vulnerable today in Jesus' name. <laughs> Uh, th there was one time I, I, had a, I had a high top, Pierre, a high top. Now, you're going to have to see it by faith. <laughs> but it was there. <laughs> uh, there was one time I had, anybody remembers, especially my uh, brothers of color here, anybody ever remembers S-curls? S-curls? Pastor Femi, you remember S-curls? <laughs> this is when you, you put a little bit of a perm in your hair to make it a little straight and make it curly. <laughs> And uh, anybody remembers the back in the MC Hammer days? Anybody? No? No? Church people? Come on. Talk to me, somebody. Well, I had three lines on, this, on the right side of my head. <laughs> I had another three lines here. And then I had another line at the back. <laughs> a little check sign, by the way. 
And uh, there was a movie back in the days, and there were two characters in that movie called Kid and Play. Well, I had the kid and play hairstyles. I did them both. Talk to me, somebody. But I'll never forget the day when I went on the mirror, Dave, and I noticed that on the right side, uh, my hairline had gone up a little. I remember thinking the devil is a liar. Because <laughs> I don't like things that are unsymmetrical. I see. So I went to my barber and I told my barber, hey, my right side went up a little, so you need to go up a little on the left so we can make this thing symmetrical. <laughs> and Donald, he did it. It looked good. And I thought to myself, my problems are over. I'm all set for life. <laughs> Donald, I'm so jealous of you. You're in your 50s. You got all your hair in there. <laughs> it's my brother Donald. Uh, and then I thought I was all set. But just after a few months, it happened again. Same thing. The right side went up a little. I went back to the Bible and said, you know, you're going to have to go up a little on the left. Let's make this thing symmetrical. Happened again twice. The fourth time, it went up a lot. <laughs> I remember thinking, how far back are we going with this thing, Lord? <laughs> and so I told my Bible, hey, man, you better fix this thing. And Pastor Femi, while he was fixing the good side, he went up a little on the good side. He messed up the good side, so he had to go higher on the bad side to fix it. Now, by this time, this hairline was back here. <laughs> I'm thinking, how far back are we going with this thing? <laughs> and this was the time that I had gotten engaged to my lovely wife here. So I remember thinking, oh, my God, this is not the time for this to be happening. <laughs> and I thought to myself, do I tell her, do I not? And then I'm thinking if I tell her, she's going to break off the engagement. <laughs> and then I became weird, right? I became weird. And I'm not a guy to carry secrets, but I became weird. And I used to wear hats like that every single day. Every single day. Morning, afternoon, even at the night time, I used to wear hats. We'd be watching a movie together on the couch, and she'd say, take your, take your hat off. I just want to kiss your head. I'll be like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just keep the hat on. She noticed that something weird was going on. She could tell that I wasn't forthcoming. And I was becoming more and more weird. We were growing apart. And one day I decided I'm just going to tell her. So I said, "Hun." I got something to tell you. She got scared right away. What do you have to tell me? Are you breaking up with me? I said, no, I'm not. It's worse than that. <laughs> she said, what's going on? Are you, are you, something bad happened? And I just spilled it out. I'm losing my hair. <laughs> she said, say what? I said, I'm losing my hair. She said, that's it? I said, that's it. That's a problem. <laughs> and then she said, come here. I'm going to hug you. You're my man. You're so handsome. Whether with hair or not, you're my man. We're going to be together forever. We're going to be awesome. And, and we've been doing that for 13 years. Somebody help me celebrate in this place. Impact, I want to lay the foundation for this message here. Very simple. This is the big takeaway to get today. Is that vulnerability creates a deep connection. Vulnerability creates a deep connection. Please write that down. Very simple. Vulnerability creates a deep connection. Vulnerability creates a deep connection. Matter of fact, the greater the vulnerability, the deeper the connection. The greater the vulnerability, the greater the relationship. You know, we live in this day and age where relationships are superficial. We're going to break that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. You ask a teenager, how, how many friends do you have? Pastor, I have 5,002 friends. I got 2,000 on Instagram. I got 3,000 on Facebook. And I got two real friends. <laughs> relationships are superficial. And there's no connection. And I want you to know that God 
instituted community because there are benefits that are found in community. Somebody say amen. amen. Vulnerability creates deep connections. We talked about proximity last week and proximity is good, but I want you to know this. Proximity is just level one. If you stay too long on proximity, you're going to have relationships that lack depth. Proximity is just gear number one. So please write this down. Proximity without vulnerability creates relationships that lack depth. Proximity without vulnerability creates relationships that lack depth. Yes, proximity is good. Yes, proximity creates opportunity. But if you stay on proximity too long, you're going to have a crowd in your life. But there's no quality of relationships. Somebody said hallelujah. Now, in the text that we just read, we know that Jesus was, was with his disciples for three years. They lived together. They were in proximity. They had vulnerability. They did life together. They were in community together. But then Jesus left them. He was crucified on Friday, was in the grave on Saturday, and then he rose again on Sunday. For three days, Jesus was not with them. And it's amazing how they grew apart in just a matter of three days. It's amazing how relationships can grow apart because of something that happens. A simple thing can happen. And all of a sudden, somebody you were very, very close to, all of a sudden, you're apart. This is what happened. Jesus was with them for three years. All of a sudden, they grew apart in just a matter of three days. And in the text we just read, the Bible says they are looking at Jesus like he's a ghost. And the Bible says they were doubting. Of course, Jesus had told them he would rise up from the dead again. They had seen Jesus resurrect dead people. They had seen Jesus heal people. But all of a sudden, there was this gap. There was this, there was, they grew apart. There was this weird, this awkwardness between them. And the question is, how did Jesus fix this situation? It's as if they were giving Jesus a cold shoulder. And this is what most of us do. Once somebody gives you a cold shoulder, we are masters at giving them a cold shoulder back. Talk to me, somebody, in this 11 o'clock service. You don't talk to me, I ain't talking to you. You don't got no time for me, I ain't got no time for you. We're so good at this. But how did Jesus respond to this situation? It's amazing. In verse 39, the Bible says Jesus became vulnerable. He showed them his wounds. He said, look at my hands. Look at my feet. Here's my wounds. Here's where they pierced, pierced me. Matter of fact, he even said, touch my wounds. Touch my legs. Touch me. This, this is me. How does Jesus respond in a situation where he's being doubted? He responds with vulnerability. Somebody shout hallelujah. He restores the connection. He restores the relationship by being vulnerable. But we fear being vulnerable. There are four kinds of families. The first type of family are families that grew up thinking vulnerability is a sign of weakness. Vulnerability is a sign of weakness. There are families that grew up believing that. I grew up in a culture where they said African boys don't cry. So once a tear started coming down, you wiped it off and you cried in the bathroom. And I grew up in coaches where you never saw men crying. But Impact, I'm here to tell you that vulnerability is not a sign of weakness. Somebody say amen. amen. Only strong people who are secure in themselves can be vulnerable. Vulnerability is not a sign of weakness. Only strong people who are secure in themselves can be vulnerable. Please write this down. Showing your wounds is not only a sign of strength, it is also godly because Jesus showed his wounds. Showing your wounds is not only a sign of strength, it is the godly thing to do because Jesus showed his wounds. Somebody say amen. So vulnerability is strength. The strong people are vulnerable. One time I went to go eat with a, with a bunch of other senior pastors, friends of mine. Matter of fact, it was just two months ago. I went to eat with about 12 other senior pastors, amazing fellas. We had a meal together, and the waitress had come. We were all ordering 
the drinks together. And uh, my wife here, my lovely wife, introduced me to an, an amazing drink called Shirley Temple. It's a nice little pink looking drink. It's a good drink. I love it so much, but I sometimes I'm ashamed to ask for it. Because it is known as a drink for ladies. <laughs> right, Donald? <laughs> and so I really wanted to have Shirley Temple with my burger. It's grenadine mixed with ginger ale, I believe. So when the waitress came, what are you going to drink? I whispered, Shirley Temple. <laughs> now, this waitress was not working with me that day. She said, can you speak up? What are you going to drink? I said, Shirley Temple. And she said, Shirley Temple? All the fellas heard this, Dave, and they started laughing. The pastor of Impact Church wants some Shirley Temple. Sorry, church, I let you down. <laughs> and one of the brothers said to me, hey, brother, man, why are you ashamed, man? Why are you ashamed of this Shirley Temple thing? And he told, he took the liberty to tell the waitress, hey, man, get him some Shirley Temple. Because what I responded was, yes, give me some Shirley Temple, but no cherries. No cherries for me. And the guy said, no, give this pastor some Shirley Temple. And make sure you put three cherries in there. That's the picture right here. <laughs> now, I was in this place ashamed. Why? Because my African little boy in me says vulnerability is weakness. That's the lie of the enemy because he wants to isolate you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, we're breaking that in this place in the name of Jesus. Come on, I can trust you. You can trust me. We can talk because we're stronger together. Vulnerability is not a sign of weakness. Only strong people who know themselves, who are secure in who they are, can be vulnerable. I want to give you the second group of people. Families that grow up and they never witness vulnerability. It's not that you despise it. You just have never seen people being vulnerable. And then the third group are people who are only vulnerable to manipulate other people. These are families of people that are prideful. The only time they're vulnerable is to manipulate. The only time they're vulnerable is when they are caught. And then there's a fourth group, those, those families that are actually vulnerable and it's a healthy type of vulnerability. Somebody shout hallelujah. I believe God is releasing a healthy type of vulnerability at Impact Church in the name of Jesus because we are stronger together. Come on, if you're going to clap, let's do it well in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's your day to be free again in the name of Jesus. So Impact, I want us to grow deeper, to go deeper here in the word of God. And I want to give you three points here what vulnerability does for you. And then God is going to release something in this place in the name of Jesus. I can feel his presence in this room right now. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, yes. Let's take a moment and celebrate the Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Impact, we serve a God who showed his wounds. We serve a Jesus who was not ashamed to show his wounds. He said, this is me, guys. It's me, Jesus. We walk together. Touch me. Here's my wounds. Here are my wounds. So number one, please write this down. Vulnerability gives you a deeper connection with God. Vulnerability gives you a deeper connection with God. How many people are looking for a deeper relationship with the Lord in this place? You know, the Bible says in the book of Psalm 51, verse 17, a broken and a contrite heart you will not despise. God is attracted to vulnerability. John chapter 4, verse 24 says, God is seeking true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. In other words, those who will worship him spiritually and truthfully. That's real worship. Hallelujah. Come on, gone are the days of hiding. That's what has killed the church. We're going to create a culture in this place of vulnerability. Come on. Because God is attracted to vulnerability. 
It's time to pray vulnerable prayers again. It's time to tell the Lord how you really feel. It's amazing when people become mature in Christ and they begin to wear the title uh, prayer warrior or intercessor. It's amazing how people begin to change. Because once you have that label, Pastor Femi, of a prayer warrior, you got to be strong. Nobody can see you weak. And you begin to pray such professional prayers. Anybody has ever heard professional prayers in this place? You know somebody's a professional prayer warrior because they, when they pray, they say, Father God, at, at least 100 times. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God. We ask you, Father God, today, before we do anything, Father God, Father God, would you please, Father God, Father God, would you please, Father God, change us, Father God. We love you, Father God. You're everything, Father God. Father God. <laughs> Quit that, Father God, stuff. Once in a while, you got to pray like blind but miss and just say, help. I'm in trouble. Help me. Come on, somebody. Somebody yell, help in this place. Come on, once in a while, you got to pray some true prayer. I need help. <laughs> Father God, help me. Father God, I hey, man, you got 20 bucks. It's time to pray some real prayers in Jesus' name. Let's go to the Bible, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. This is Paul who's speaking. Let me take a little moment here and teach. This is Paul who's speaking. Remember, this is a mega apostle. This is the guy who's written three quarters of the New Testament. Here's his prayer. Here's what he's saying, rather. I'm not saying that I have this all together. I'm not saying that I have it all together. In fact, God told me to tell someone in this place, it's okay to not have it all together all the time. Uh, you're not less of a Christian if you don't have it all together. Let me remind somebody in this place. Mothers, today is Mother's Day. Let me remind you, mothers, let me encourage you. It's okay to have a bad hair day once in a while. Talk to me, somebody. It's okay to not have a mani and a petty all the time. And husbands, we need to encourage them. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's okay not to have it together all the time. Because we've created this culture in the church that if you're spiritual, you're going to have it all together all the time. Here's what Paul, the writer of three quarters of the New Testament says. I'm not saying that I have this together. That I've, I have it made. But I'm well on my way. See, that's healthy vulnerability. I can tell you where I am, but I know where I'm going. I'm well on my way. Reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert. Let me tell you this. The world needs to see Christians who can say this. People don't want to come to church because we've created this stigma that if you get saved, you have to be an expert at everything. It says, but I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. Anybody not turning back in this place in Jesus' name? You don't have to have it all together all the time. Somebody asked me, what's your number one secret as a pastor? I told them, knowing that I don't have all the answers. People make mistakes because they have to pretend like they have all the answers. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 8 to 10. Paul is saying, three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Paul says, I have a thorn in my flesh. I have a weakness. I have this struggle. And three times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. And then he says, my power works best in weakness. My power works best in weakness. Let's say that together. My power. Second time, real big. My power. Impact, before I continue reading, I want you to know this. There's a dimension of God's power and strength that you will only experience when you go through a season of weakness and vulnerability. There's a dimension of God's strength. There's a dimension of God's power that you will only experience when you go through a season of weakness and vulnerability. Don't run away from vulnerability. God is attracted by it. 
God is attracted to it. Let's continue reading. So Paul says, so now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses. This is vulnerability right here. I take pleasure in my weaknesses and insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, I am strong. Because there's a dimension of God's strength and power that can only be experienced when you go through a season of weakness and vulnerability. Somebody say amen. There's a scripture I love in John chapter 9. There's a man who has a son who's struggling with epilepsy. He goes to Jesus and Jesus says to him, do you believe that your son can be healed? And he says, Jesus, I believe, but please help my unbelief. In other words, he's saying, Jesus, I believe, but really I don't. I should really have faith that you can heal my boy. Mature believers, we need to get to a place where we can pray such prayers. God help my unbelief. I, I really don't believe that you can take this high blood pressure away. God, if I can be honest, I don't believe that this sugar diabetes can go. If I can be honest, I really don't believe you can heal me in this situation. I, don't, I really don't believe that this is going to happen to my children and my parents. And my, God, if I can be hon honest, please help my unbelief. Talking about spiritual warfare, that's spiritual warfare, baby. Because God is attracted to your weakness. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's time to get deep with the Lord. It's time to grow in our relationship. God, God, I don't believe. Please help my unbelief. Somebody say amen. Isaiah, according to Isaiah chapter 6, when he's called into the ministry to be a prophet, he says to God, God, I know you're calling me to be a prophet, but I want you to know this. I'm a man of unclean lips. You know what he's saying, Donald? He's saying, God, I know you want me to preach the word of God, but I just want you to know, once in a while, I'd be dropping some F-bombs. <laughs> That's honesty. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because there are F-bombs in the church too. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah, I, I know I'm not going to get an amen in this place right now. But I know there's some F-bombs out there in Jesus' name. And once in a while, you got to get to a place to just say, God, I'm hurting. I know you want to use me for your glory, but I'm a man of unclean lips because I'm broken. God used Elijah, but he, he came to a place where he became suicidal. He said, God, why don't you just take me? I'm tired. I'm weary. I feel like I'm the only one out here doing the good things. Just, just take me. And the Bible says God sent angels to him. They baked a cake for him. They nourished him. They fed him. And then they said, get up so you can fulfill everything that's ahead of you. There's a dimension of God's strength and power that you only experience through a season of weakness and vulnerability. <laughs> Hallelujah. Which means there's a side of God that you don't know yet until you go through a season yeah. of pain and anguish. There's a revelation of God that you don't have yet. So don't resist vulnerability. Somebody say amen. Jesus says, Father, Please take this cup away from me. This is Jesus. I, I, I don't want to do this. I really don't, but by your will, I will do it. And then he says, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which simply means, Father, why have you forsaken me? Church people, it's okay to ask God questions. Just still trust him. It's okay to say, why did this happen? Why did this happen to me? Why, why such an early divorce? Why, why did mama go too soon? Why, why did this? But I still trust you. I still trust you. I still believe in you. Though he slays me, I'll still believe in him. Some trust in horses. Come on. Some trust in chariots. But we will trust in the name of the Lord. I still trust you. I still believe you. Even in my pain, I can still worship you. Because you're God all by yourself. Somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, let's go to the second one. Vulnerability gives you a deeper connection with others. Vulnerability gives you a deeper connection with others. Please write it this way. 
Relationships are only as deep as your willingness to be vulnerable. Relationships are only as deep as your willingness to be vulnerable. Somebody say amen. Here's a little transition. Relationships that have depth bring wholeness and healing. Relationships that have depth, they bring wholeness and healing. Where is that, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Let's go to James chapter 5, verse 16. James chapter 5, verse 16. It says, make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together whole and healed. The King James Version says it this way. Confess your sins one to another. Pray for one another so you may be healed. Confess your sins one to another so you may be healed. Confess your sins one to another so you may be healed. Impact, which means there's a dimension of God's healing and wholeness that you will never experience unless you interact with somebody. Relationships and community, that's one of the ways that God heals you. I'm going to take my time here because this is the missing piece in the house of God. There's a dimension of God's healing and wholeness that can only be experienced through people. Confess your sins one to another so you may be healed. There's a dimension of healing and wholeness that can only be experienced through relationship, through community. Which means every time you give somebody a cold shoulder, you just destroyed a possible remedy for God to heal you through. Every time you shut somebody down, give somebody a cold shoulder, and we're so professional at this in the house of God. Every time you do that, you just destroyed a possible avenue for God to heal you through. Because confess your sins one to another so you may be healed. My healing is locked up in you. Your healing is locked up in me. You can't ignore me. I can't ignore you because your healing is locked up in me. My healing is locked up in you. So some of us have been crying out to God, God heal me, God heal me, God heal me. And God is saying, I already healed you, but you're ignoring the miracle, the healing, the avenue that I've provided for you to receive the miracle because your healing is locked up in somebody else. Come on, touch two or three people and tell them, I can't ignore you because your healing is locked up in me. You can't ignore me because your healing is locked up in me. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. LJ, you want a miracle? You're looking at it. Dave, you want a miracle? You're looking at it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, I need your faith, Pastor Femi. I need your faith, Donald. I need you to be a better husband. You need me to be a better husband. Come on, somebody shout in this place and celebrate God. <laughs> hallelujah. Confess your sins one to another so you may be healed. You can't ignore me, and I can't ignore you. This is what has weakened the church because we developed a generation of conceited believers who felt like I can go and fast and pray by myself and ignore everybody else and get my miracle. So they became religious, but they didn't get the miracle. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. My miracle is locked up in you. Your miracle is locked up in me. We need one another. You know, one of the things I love about Impact Church is that we're such a cross-cultural church. Come on, I just love the United Nations in this place. Can we celebrate what God is doing in this place? What a God, what a church. One of these days, what we need to do is we need to have a cross-cultural a, a day. That's it, a cultural day. And I need everybody to make some food. Come on, somebody. Because I want to eat me some Brazilian food and give me some, some Haitian food. Bring me that, that Jamaican food. And I want that Spanish and Dominican food too. Come on, somebody. Talk to me in this place. Woo, I feel the glory of God now. <laughs> I think Brazilians have the best barbecue in the world. Now listen, I think Haitian people have the best fish in the world. 
I think Dominicans have the best rice in the world. Now, I think Puerto Ricans have the best beans in the world. Everybody makes beans, but the Puerto Ricans, they make those beans so good. They put their foot in that thing. I think Colombians make the best eggs in the world. Everything eggs. Breakfast eggs, lunch eggs, dinner eggs, eggs for everything. Fried egg. Now, here's the thing with food. Here's the thing with food. Is that as much as you eat, you won't be healthy unless you take it out. In other words, you have to output at the level at which you're inputting. Impact, I want you to know it's the same principle in the spirit. The reason vulnerability is important is that it allows you to output at the level at which you're inputting. And if you don't output at the level at which you're inputting, it's called constipation. People die with that thing. Because that stuff that happened to you when you were nine, you took it in, you never told anybody. Happened to you when you were 15, you took it in, you never told anybody. Happened again when you are 20, you took it in, never told anybody. That stuff that happened to you in your first marriage, second marriage, the stuff that happened to you in college, you never told anybody. And you're crying out to God, God heal me, God heal me. And God is saying, I've already healed you, but you're not outputting at the level at which you're inputting. <laughs> Hallelujah. And God is saying, every time I send people to you, you push them away. You have proximity, but you refuse vulnerability. And so you go to church and it feels like you've gone to a mall. You're in the midst of thousands of people, but there's no quality and no depth. And I'll tell you this, listen to me. The devil would love for you to be part of this church and still be disconnected. Because he will stop you from having all that God wants you to have. We're breaking that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I cannot tell you how many marriages could have been saved if they only talked to somebody. I, can t I can't even tell you how many people would be healed today if they just taught somebody. Uh, ladies, today's mothers, they tell another sister, I don't even feel good about myself anymore. Why can't we do that in the house of God? Tell somebody, I, I, I'm broken. I, I'm going through a season of barrenness. I can't have children Talk to somebody. I, I just had a miscarriage. Talk to somebody. Come on in this place in Jesus' name. Come on, we're releasing that culture in this place. Let me tell somebody in this place, you will not slay that demon of pornography by yourself. We go through the same stuff, but everybody hides. We're breaking that in this place in Jesus' name. Come on, we are breaking the stigma of mental health in the church in the name of Jesus. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Come on, if you're not well, you can talk to someone in this place. This is a safe place. Because the enemy wants to destroy you. Hallelujah. And one of the things that God is speaking to me in this place today is that he's breaking the spirit of numbness. He's breaking the spirit of numbness. Some of you are so numb in this place because you've taken in so much. It's piled up in there. It's clogged up your system. And you've just become numb. You can't even feel no more. You can be in a worship service like this and walk out and say, that church is not powerful enough. No, no. It's not that the church is not powerful enough. You have too many walls. You can't feel nothing. And God is telling me he's breaking through that in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Hallelujah. I come from Africa where in order to protect ourselves from thieves, Donald, we build these big brick walls to surround our homes. Now, the thing with these long and tall big wa brick walls is that the walls protect you from the thieves, but they block the breeze at the same time. So you're protected from the thieves, but you're hot in your house. Because the walls are protecting you, but they're also blocking the wind. 
God told me to tell someone in this place, you've built walls to protect and preserve yourself, but those walls of preservation are also blocking the wind of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The wind of God. God wants to revive you again. Please stand if you can. Hallelujah. I'll give you the third point while you're standing. Here's the final point. Is that vulnerability gives you a deep connection with your purpose. Vulnerability gives you a deep connection with your purpose. Somebody shot purpose. This is why. Because we serve a God who specializes in turning your mess into your message. Your message is in your mess. So Jacob was on the run, hiding his identity. And one day an angel apprehended him. And for the first time he asked him, what's your name? Who are you? And Jacob for the first time confessed and said, I am Jacob. In other words, I'm a liar. I'm a deceiver. I don't like myself. I, I have issues. I have problems. And God said, that's it. I've been waiting for you to be vulnerable. The moment he became vulnerable, the angel said, I'm now changing your name into Israel. Which means prince with God. From a deceiver to a prince with God. What happened? What was the shift? Vulnerability. Because vulnerability will give you a deep connection with your purpose. Somebody say amen.